I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, and in this lesson, we're going to go over a couple of different ways that you can check yourself when you're doing a portrait sculpture. This video is sponsored by the DaVinci Eye app. We'll talk about them in a little bit. In my lesson on the 10 steps to portrait sculpture, I mentioned this as step number six, but you should be doing the things that I mentioned in this video throughout the sculpting process. In this lesson, I want to mention as many methods as possible, but it's really up to you which methods you decide to use and incorporate into your workflow. I recommend checking yourself using one or more of these methods during each stage of the sculpting process because it's important to know if that stage is accurate before you move on. It's really important to check ourselves because as we're working on a sculpture, it's really easy to get tunnel vision where you're focused on just one area of the sculpture and then we lose sight of how that area or how that detail relates to the sculpture as a whole. Currently, my favorite method for checking myself is with technology, an application that you can get on your phone. The DaVinci Eye application allows you to overlay a reference image with the camera of your phone or iPad, and that way you can align that with your sculpture, and then you can adjust the reference image or the camera settings so that you can get the two images to overlay nicely, and that way you can check yourself really accurately. This is an application that you have to pay for, but for me, it's worth it because I use it all the time for almost every sculpture project, especially when I'm working from reference images rather than sculpting from a live model. When you're using this app, you do have to keep in mind the perspective and the angle that the reference images were taken from as you're overlaying it with the sculpture using your camera. So if you are taking the reference images from slightly above, and then as you're using the application, you're looking at the sculpture from slightly below, then that distortion will cause the photos to not align and it won't be as effective of a tool when checking your sculpture. As you're using the application, back away from your sculpture and zoom in with your camera so that you eliminate a lot of that distortion. And this applies whether you're using the DaVinci Eye app or if you're using another application that allows you to overlay photos and then change the opacity of the photos. You also wanna make sure that you're looking at the exact same angle that the sculpture isn't twisting to one side or the other compared to the reference image that you're using. Generally, I'll use the DaVinci Eye app when I'm capturing the side profile likeness of the face and the front view of the face to make sure that the width of the neck, the width of the face, the location of the eyes, the mouth, the nose, the ears are all established and in the right place before moving on. I usually won't use it for every single angle. You know, stop here, use the DaVinci Eye app, and then move slightly and do it again. I have done it in the past if I'm really struggling with a sculpture. If you are using this application to check from every angle, you want to have a center line, a clear center line drawn in your sculpture, and then you want to pay attention to where the nose is in relationship to the eye socket as the head is turning because small variations where you're turning can make a big difference when you're looking at the outline of the sculpture. The reason I like this app is because it just lets you do it in a real time and so it's easier to line things up and make sure that the perspective angle and everything is good. If you're interested in getting this application, you can use the affiliate link in the description of this video. Another method that goes along with this is just taking a reference image of your sculpture. For some reason, when you take a picture of your sculpture and it's compressed into a 2D plane, then it makes it a little bit easier for us to work out the differences and issues that we might have. So you might even just take your reference image and the image of your sculpture and have them next to each other and then look back and forth so that you can see what differences there are in those two. Something else you can do is actually print out your reference images. So the references of yourself or whoever you're sculpting, if you can get the turnaround of them 360, at least like around 24 different photos from every angle, and then print those out on paper, and then be able to hold those in your hand and be able to step back away from your sculpture and then look back and forth between those two, that's another really helpful exercise to be able to check yourself. This is one of the methods that Amelia Rowcroft uses in her portrait sculpting masterclass, and you can see what a great finish and incredible likeness she's able to achieve in her work. Let's go over some ways to check yourself using measurements. If you're fortunate enough to be able to sculpt from a live model, it can be really helpful to invest in a pair of calipers like these. 
Calipers are often used to check specific measurements like the top of the forehead to the bottom of the chin or the notch of the ear to the notch of the ear on the other side, the notch of the ear to the chin along the center line of the face, the widest point of the facial mass on the cheekbone, that zygomatic arch, the widest point on the back of the head, as well as the distance between the center of the eyes, the inside of the eyes and the outside corners of the eyes. Just be careful when you're taking these measurements. You don't want to poke somebody in the eye or yourself in the eye. The corners of the mouth, the outside edge of the nose from the front view, the outside edges of the ears, and the width of the neck from side to side and the width of the neck from front to back, between your eyebrows to the back of your skull. In the premium course, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth on how to use these measurements, how to triangulate the measurements in space so you make sure that they're accurate in relation to one another, which can be something that's really tricky, and then how to use math or tools to scale the sculpture up or down depending on what size of sculpture you're doing. So if you're really interested in portrait sculpting, I hope that you'll get the full portrait sculpting course over at proca.com slash portrait sculpt. Another way to check yourself is to get someone else to look at your sculpture, get another perspective. Preferably somebody with a good eye, with judgment that you can trust when it comes to visuals. You can show the sculpture to them directly in person, or you can take pictures and send those to them. And this can be tricky because it is a difficult thing to be able to look at a sculpture that's a little bit off and look at the references and then be able to give specific advice on how to fix the sculpture. So not everybody's gonna be good at that, but what you can do is ask specific things like, does the nose look too large or too small? Or the, do the eyes look too close together or too far apart? So asking specific questions can help you get back a little bit more specific feedback. Vague observations like, it doesn't look right, or something looks off, those aren't really very helpful. And so try to fish for specific feedback in specific areas of the sculpture. The next method is something that you might have heard of when you're checking yourself in a drawing, but it's also really helpful for sculpting, and that is using a mirror. Having a mirror so that you can look at the reflection of the sculpture, this can help you see some of the distortion from left to right that you might have missed otherwise. Sometimes one eye is a little bit higher than the other. Sometimes the corners of the mouth, one's a little bit higher than the other, or the same thing with the nose. So looking at it in a mirror, that can make those areas that are off become a little bit more obvious. These are things that we're usually blind to until we start to check our work. Another way to get a fresh perspective is simply stepping back away from your sculpture. By putting some space between you and the sculpture, it will help you escape from that tunnel vision that happens when we're working up close in the details of the sculpture. Something I heard from a sculptor is he thought that it would be a good idea for beginners if they had a bungee cord that was like connected to a wall behind them so that they had to like fight to get up to the sculpture and put a piece of clay and then they're like brought back to the far wall so that they had to observe the sculpture from a distance. I think that that's kind of a, a fun way to think about it. As much as you can, stepping back away from the sculpture, putting some distance between you and the sculpture. From a distance, it's a lot easier to see the outline and the shadow shapes of the forms of the face. Speaking of the forms that the light casts on your sculpture, changing the lighting is a great way to get a fresh view of your sculpture. This is something that I usually like to do in the later stages where most of the secondary forms of the portrait are established. Whenever it's possible, it's a good idea to light your sculpture the same way that the references are lit. If you're working from life, you can make sure that the lighting on your sculpture and the lighting on the model is as close as possible. That means that sometimes maybe you'll have to push your sculpture up right next to the model and then step back away so that you can see the lighting on the model and on your sculpture where you're the same distance back from both the model and the sculpture. Obviously, lighting has a huge impact in how we're able to view the sculpture. I mean, just try observing a sculpture without light. It's not very effective, is it? So changing the lighting can help us see more of those forms and the shadows that are cast and help us address any of the mistakes or issues with our sculpture. Using toothpicks or matchsticks can also be a helpful way to check your sculpture. This is especially helpful if you're sculpting life size or larger, and it can sometimes be difficult to see around your sculpture when you're close up. So by placing some toothpicks in different areas of the sculpture, you can check 
to make sure that the heights are the same, that the distances back from the, the mouth, the corners of the mouth compared to the eyes. You can put toothpicks in the corners of the eyes to check if one's a little bit higher than the other. Same thing with the mouth or with the ears. It's just a way to gather more visual information in a way that's a little bit easier to interpret. If you're sculpting somebody that's not a straightforward view, like they're tilting their neck, they're twisting their head, using toothpicks to be able to make sure that those features are aligned can be really helpful. The last method is checking from extreme angles. Now these are angles that we generally don't see on people. We're usually not looking at somebody from above and we're usually not looking at somebody from below, but being able to observe our sculptures from these extreme angles helps us to see any asymmetry from side to side. It's a lot more obvious, so it can be really helpful. Checking things like the depth of the features compared to the center line, making sure that things like the mouth are bending back in space accurately, and checking the symmetry from side to side to make sure that there's not weird things happening, like if one side of the forehead is coming forward a little bit more, or maybe a little bit more blocky than the other side of the forehead, those things are easier to observe and address when you're looking at the sculpture from an extreme angle. So you can set the sculpture on the ground and observe it from above when you're standing, or you can sit down on a stool or crouch down and look at the sculpture from below. If you can, it may also be helpful to have references of your model from these extreme angles. I recommend checking out these extreme angles when you're working on the bony features of the skull earlier on in the process. And if you've placed those toothpicks, you can also look at those from above or from below. So for example, the ears might look fine when you're looking at them from side to side, but then when you go from front to back, you might see that one ear is a little bit too far forward in space compared to the other, and that's something that's easier to see from above. Okay, that's a lot. There's a lot of different ways to check yourself. Hopefully this gives you some ideas and some things that you can start implementing as you're sculpting. As you're checking the sculpture, make sure not to neglect any areas. For example, you know, back here, the, sh the exact shape and curve of the back of the head, that's something that people often overlook and they don't realize just how important that is in order to capture an accurate likeness from all the way around. In the premium course, I'm gonna go more in depth on taking measurements and triangulating those measurements. And there are additional premium demos and lessons. So if you're really interested in portrait sculpting, I really hope you'll check out the full portrait sculpting course over at proco.com slash portrait sculpt. The premium courses are what enable us to be able to create so much free content. I really appreciate everybody that's purchased any Proco course, but especially my Proco courses, I'm really grateful for that. So thank you, stay productive, stay creative, and I'll see you in the next lesson. If you haven't watched the video on my 10 steps to a successful portrait sculpture, you can find that here.